The Red Sea is a flashpoint in geopolitics today. Many nations want to control this vital shipping route. Learn how the battle for the Red Sea will trigger World War III, next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. I wrote a booklet in 2015 titled Germany's Secret Strategy to Conquer Iran. 2015 about nine years ago, and at, at that time, the Houthis of the Middle East, an Iranian proxy, was sponsored by Iran, and the Houthis overthrew the pro-American Yemeni government. So that caused a lot of problems in the Middle East in many ways. That takeover just put Iran in charge of uh, that part of the country and with the potential to uh, gain two great sea gates in that area, which controls a large part and maybe the largest trade area in the world. And it's something that has a lot to do with the peace in this world. We need peace, and this is going to cause a lot of problems and uh, wars in the Middle East because there's another country, Germany, who wants that, those two gates even more, perhaps, than the Iranians. So if you think about this peace, well, Right now, Egypt is an ally of the U.S., but that's going to change very shortly, and they're going to be allying themselves with Iran, and that will then even give them access to the Suez Canal, which is just north of the bottom of the Red Sea where there is one gate there that I'll get into in a moment. This is all prophesied in your Bible. It's amazing how much there is uh, in your Bible prophesying this very thing, that it's these sea gates are critical. If you want to try to control them, uh, you need to have, have them, and in the past, America and Britain have had most of them, but now they've lost most of them. Here we have Germany and Europe. They understand how dangerous this is with Iran potentially and very close to getting control of two of the greatest gates, sea gates in the world. And that's going to have everything to do with the peace in this world. And right now, Germany is hurting even because of that, because now the ships have to go around. South Africa, and it cost them a lot more money to get the goods, especially to Europe. They are being hurt most of all by what's happening here. Now, what is happening in this Red Sea is going to bring on the strong man of Europe because it's getting very shaky, and Europe has been seeking a strong man for more than a decade, and they're going to have to get that strong man because they don't have a strong chancellor in Europe as the way most people see it. They have to have a strong man that is going to control the power there is in Europe. They've already got a superpower, and most people don't understand that. And it's just getting greater all the time, and they're selling arms to this world like very few countries are, and it may be number one very shortly. They have all kind of armaments, even though we stated very clearly that we would never allow Germany to arm themselves again like that and start another world war. They started World War I, and they started World War II. Now, we need to understand that this strong man is going to be able to change things very radically in the Red Sea. This is a critical position for 
the Europeans to gain control, and we'll see how they're going to do that. Verse 23 says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences, this is backed by a great evil spirit being that is on this earth, and he and all of the demons are confined to this earth and are causing all kinds of traumatic problems. So dark sentences, he's going to stand up. That means he's got a lot of power, evil spirit power. It says in verse 24, And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. It's going to be the power of this great evil spirit. And it goes on to say that this Holy Roman Empire is going to destroy the mighty and holy people, those who have become Laodicean and lukewarm. God is going to do that to try to wake them up because they have forsaken God. But notice the good news here. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. In other words, by God himself. Now that is uh, the best news we could possibly hear. And it's all connected to what's going on in the Red Sea. It's, it's going to follow right on the heels of that, and, and, and the war it's going to cause. World War III, that's what your Bible says. Notice what I wrote in 2011. Radical Islam could stop the flow of essential oil to the U.S. and Europe. Now that was about 13 years ago. It was pretty obvious what Iran's strategy was even at that time and what they were planning on doing. But I want to get on to a scripture here that talks about a whirlwind prophecy. If you look in the Mediterranean, you'll see that Iran is in control really of Libya and will be of Egypt. And that means that they're right on the Mediterranean Sea, and they want that Mediterranean Sea very badly, but they don't probably want it as badly as Germany does. And Germany is getting control of it. And that's the way it's going to be. You can see how critical that Mediterranean Sea is, and there's a good possibility Germany could have won World War II if they had gotten control and kept control of the Mediterranean Sea. That's how important it has been in the past wars. This is written in 2015. We have taught for about 20 years based on this prophecy that Iran and its radical Islamist allies are going to be conquered, but we have never been able to tell you how it's going to happen until now. And now we know how it's going to conquer Iran. The Bible tells us that, and even prophesies specifically the nations involved. Very interesting prophecy indeed. So Daniel 11 and verse 40, here's what it says. So Iran is doing a lot of pushing, and this prophecy talks about that and more. Verse 40. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over." Now this is all a whirlwind going on here. Well, what does that mean? Well, first there's going to be a pushing, and that's what even Iran is doing now. In the Red Sea, they're pushing against Europe, most of all. Europe is hurt by this, this pushing. And they know, the Iranians know, that that gives them a lot more power than even Hezbollah in the north of Jerusalem and the state of Israel. 
they are pushing already. God says they're going to make one big push, and it's going to bring about a clash between Iran and their satellites and the uh, Holy Roman Empire of Europe. Now, that is building right now. And what is this whirlwind all about? The whirlwind causes a lot of terror, it says. It's a savage storm. It's a whirlwind. It surrounds its enemy, Iran, and Iran's allies around the Middle East. And it's really, they've just become uh, involved in a deadly circle. We have a map there to show you all this, and you can see it better. And uh, when you write for our material, it'll, you can study it and see it even more clearly. But it's critical that we understand what's happening in the Middle East and in the Red Sea, which goes back all the way back to Moses. You remember when, when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, and then the uh, Israelites didn't really trust God? And they didn't believe He was going to open up that Red Sea and just let them walk across on dry land. And then they did exactly that, finally. And then the enemy came after them, and every single one of the men drowned in the Red Sea because all of a sudden the path wasn't there and it wasn't dry anymore. God had performed a great miracle. We certainly do need God's help, but are we getting it today? I should say we are not, and that is a big problem. So take a close look at that map, and uh, really, if you look at what Germany is doing today, they're selling armaments to people all around the Middle East and around the world, but they're especially selling a lot to the Middle East and where they're having a lot of war. So, take a look now at verse 41. And he shall enter also into the glorious land, this is done peacefully, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon." Again, a little bit of history. Germany's always been right at the heart of the Holy Roman Empire for several resurrections. This is the seventh one coming up, and the last one forever. Thank God for that, because they have caused a lot of damage. And remember, we promised they'd never be allowed to do that again, as they did in World War I and World War II. So Germany is, is, is planning a strategy as well. But here God says in verse 41 that somehow Germany is going to enter into Jerusalem, or the glorious land, and be invited in to, it isn't forceful at all, they apparently are invited in to bring peace into the state of Israel. And if you look, some of the people that escape and are in that area of Edom and Moab are God's own people, and He's going to protect them from all this. He's going to protect His loyal people that are really dedicated to His work, not the ones that are lukewarm or lay it a sin. God wants people to put their whole hearts in His work and do get this message to the world. It is so urgent, and nothing is more urgent on this earth, is this message that God has in His own Bible. And you can read it and study it, and you can prove it. So uh, this peaceful interest is going to be a big mistake that uh, the Jewish state is going to regret, because they're going to be trusting Germany, and Germany has never been trustworthy in their history. I mean, it just never happens, except uh, one time they repented. <laughs> the only nation ever to repent on this earth of, of their evil doings. They, they are the only ones, so uh, we have to realize what we're dealing with here. 
in Germany, but Germany has, since the war, uh, Israel's war on Hamas, has said, well, they're allied with Jerusalem and with the, the uh, state of Israel. Now let me quote you something from 2015 that I wrote. The Houthi takeover of Yemen proves that Iran is implementing a bold strategy to control the vital sea lane from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. Now they're in the process of doing that right now before our eyes. And I prophesied this, well, the, uh, that's about uh, nine years ago. Now that Iran controls Yemen, it can virtually close or open the spigot on the Middle East, oil bound for Europe, and Europe is taking notice. They, they realize this is a danger, and they need that strong man to, to, to lead this Holy Roman Empire that's going to do a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Now. If you want to look at what's happening over there, according to this recent article, great corporations that are having to stop using the Red Sea. So they have to go all the way around South Africa to get their goods to wherever they're going. And the five largest corporations are having to go around and have a lot greater expense and it takes time to get the materials around going that way. It's much slower. And four of the top five largest corporations were European that had to turn and go. And so Europe is being devastated by this in many ways. Are they going to just take that? Are they going to accept it and not do anything at all? No, that isn't the way it's going to be. They're going to be angry, and they're going to be standing up to this problem in the Red Sea, which is far more dangerous than, let's say, uh, Hezbollah at the north of uh, Israel. And do you think they're not alarmed by what's going on here? More than anybody on this earth, they're alarmed by that, and very few people understand that. And they've raised their uh, nuclear bombs program up to 90% which was a huge increase. They want to get the nuclear bombs, and what are they going to be like after they get those nuclear bombs when you consider what they're doing right now without them? Well, Germany is aware of that, too, and probably want to strike before they get those nuclear bombs, which many, many authorities say is probably going to happen this very year. So the danger is intensifying. Time is running out, and Germany knows that. And there's going to be a clash, and they're going to have a whirlwind around Iran, and they're going to destroy that nation in a short amount of time. And yet, see, Iran doesn't realize just how dangerous this is, what they're involved in. I wrote in 2015, now rather suddenly Iran, the world's greatest state sponsor of terrorism, has basically become the gatekeeper to this strategic asset, the Bab el Mandeb Strait. That's where it's only 18 miles wide, right there at the bottom of the Red Sea. They shoot their rockets from the Houthis, all directed by Iran, and even, they even help them shoot the rockets. That's a real problem. Another short quote, Brigadier General Mohammed Reza Nakhdi told Tasnim News Agency, the West, quote, shall soon await the closure of the Mediterranean Sea, Gibraltar, and other waterways. He didn't say how Iran was going to do that, but after all, when you look at what they're doing, you better, you better believe what they're saying. At least they're going to attempt it. This is dangerous, dangerous prophecy. Verse 42 of Daniel 11, here's what it says, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Egypt's not going to escape 
the Holy Roman Empire. Why? Because they allied themselves with Iran. Somehow, how much? It's a little hard to say, but they're they're an ally at least, and maybe closer than that. Also, 43. But the king of the north shall have power, the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Well, well, the Libyans now. Where are they? Well, they're out on the Mediterranean, along with Egypt. So that that's giving Iran、uh, chances to get control of the Mediterranean, and the、uh, Germans and other Europeans are not going to ever allow that. But nevertheless, that is their goal. And then the Ethiopians, of course, are on the Red Sea itself, right there where they can、uh, make the shipping go around, and pretty soon they'll start just destroying it if they're allowed to just continue like that. But you can see the control this is giving Iran. Great control. Iran's take over the Red Sea is a literal sign that Jesus Christ is about to return. I mean, this is a sign of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And think about that. And think about all the history of that Red Sea, and what all the problems that that Moses had to put up with. With the Israelites who provoked God to anger, He did all those miracles back in Egypt, and yet the Israelites, when they got up to the Red Sea, did not believe God was going to to、uh, help them, and the, He He wasn't going to be able to、uh, get them across the Red Sea. They couldn't believe that after all those Egyptian miracles, and God was upset with them. And he he wanted to still show his power to the world, and he wasn't going to let them just stand there. But they didn't have the faith that they should have, and he just opened up that Red Sea for his people at that time that he was using to set an example for the world, and they weren't a very good example at all. But just look at what what.、Uh, We could do if we would be looking to God and His power and His might to help us instead of trying to do everything on our own without faith. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge, at no cost or obligation to you. Request Daniel unsealed at last. Germany's secret strategy to destroy Iran, Libya and Ethiopia in prophecy, and the battle for the Red Sea. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of the Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.